to the deciding frame. Little smile between the players. It's been some battle, a great, great match this between two great, great players. Ronnie O'Sullivan led 5-3. Mark Selby has fought back. It's 5-all. It's all on this. O'Sullivan is ahead on all the stats, but Mark Selby's got one of the biggest hearts in the game, and he's just stayed on his feet, as I said. As you see, the, the total points, I mean, O'Sullivan well over 200 in front, but Selby, as so often before, has just dug deep to get himself into this position in the decider. It would be some victory if he could now come through. They've played six deciders before, Selby's won four of them. Well, should be pretty regulation off the left cushion into the bunch. Very close to the red, but it does pot. Oh, it did, but it's not in. Yes, and uh, for a while it looked like the keyboard was going to head behind the yellow there on that red, but it hasn't. Of course, it's not an easy shot by any means. point is, despite being hammered for a couple of frames, Selby didn't lose heart. That's the thing. He just doesn't go away. At times in this match, it's One. been a bit like James Bond running through a hail of bullets, but not being hit. And now he's in in the decider with a chance. And he's got the class to finish it off. It's a very good chance. Six. I think someone just moved in his eye line there as he was lining up this one. Seven. Might seem a strange thing to say, but I think what's made a difference in that this match was those two re-racks in the fourth frame, because though Solomon had made back-to-back -back centuries, he was absolutely buzzing, Selby had been completely shut out. That just took the sting out of the momentum that O'Sullivan had. Obviously, since then, he's played really well. He led 5-3, but if it had been 3-1 up at the interval, he could really have run away with this. But obviously, also what's made the difference is just Selby. 40. 
as a person, as a player. The character that he's shown. Fancy one. Fancy two. Fancy now. C seven. Well, I think there might be red in the middle of the bunch that goes to the right corner, but of course he's got the other two which go in that pocket as well. If he can screw up the table, you see that red in the middle of all of those seems to be available. He's got an angle to possibly stun straight across to the right here. There's the red that he might be able to play on at some point. Forty-five. Forty-six. Well, the ready has actually opened up two or three other reds as well. Wow, that has come from nowhere, Mark Selby, 46. and that will hurt him. Too much thinking about the next red, forgot the obvious, the pot. Well, if he loses now, he'll remember that for a long, long time, that black. Black off the spot, unforced error. Yes, strangely enough, O'Sullivan missed one early like that. It was one of the reasons he never made it another century. I think he was on 87 or something. Hit the same part of the pocket. Well, uh, is O'Sullivan still geared up? One. Was he thinking about the defeat that seemed to be coming his way? It seemed hard to think that Selby was going to break down when he did. He hadn't looked like missing in that break. It's going to be tough to take if he does lose now. A match that he looked set to lose earlier this afternoon. Got himself the advantage in the decider, but he's now back in his seat. Six. Well, that's not a very good shot from O'Sullivan. You know, he's got plenty of reds over this side. Just a little tricky one here. He will be below the line of the black. D7. 
played it really well. Just the kind of shot that can you can miss if you're really struggling. Are well, you really under Bottom. some sort of extra pressure as he is? It's been a great match, this isn't it? But this twist, 50. I didn't really see coming when Selby got in first. Might yet be other twists. I'm already looking at the yellow later on. If you potted all these reds, getting on it would not be straightforward with the brown covering it to his own pocket. Twenty three. Thirty-one. There was a loud noise there in the arena. It didn't affect O'Sullivan. I think someone dropped something or something. Thirty-seven. Thirty-eight. Well, he's a bit, little straight on this. Well, that was, he was trying to make an angle there that just did not exist. He was determined to play that shot, even though if he'd looked at it, to swing that up for the red, it's just a bit too straight. Was a little in between. I think he played on the red in the middle, but he's. I wouldn't know which pocket to play in now, middle or down into the top right. Sub. Playing it in the middle takes him down potentially towards playing the brown, which could help him. It's a bit congested, that yellow, brown, and black all in a line. We'll give him something to think about. Someone shout out, no, OK, he's got the snooker. That's an outrageous fluke. Hit the knuckle of the middle pocket. Well, it, it is now one of those deciders, so Sullivan, happy to be back at the table, but finds himself snookered. This is not nice to hit. Foul, well, and a miss. Mark Selby, seven. Free ball. And what do you do here? I mean, you can have it put back. It's not a nice snooker to try and hit. Try and be a bit clever here, but O'Sullivan was in enough trouble. He was in enough trouble, O'Sullivan, behind the, the ball he was snookered on. Has to be the right decision, I think, from Selby. Black. He 
could hear that uh, you hear that uh, Michael Kessler is the marker who's helping Greg Coniglio get the balls where they were. Yeah, there's Michael, yeah. fine referee in her own right from Germany. It's just a horrible snooker. The red is just too much in the middle of the table to be easy to hit. I'm not sure it's on. Foul. I miss. I think there's an argument here that the pink is in the way of the natural three cushion angle. He's got to get so close to hitting it. Wow, that was tight. Well, all you can say is he seems to have the line. Is it a free ball? Well, it's getting costly, that's for sure. It's 30 in it now, so two more misses. He'd need a snooker himself. He's just getting there. He seems to be learning this angle. It's very, very tight. It's close to the pocket. Oh, my word, it's gone in. Can you believe it? Words found me. What a thing to happen. What a match. What a decider. What a sport. Yeah, and this, this goes in and he's on the yellow. Then all of a sudden, <coughs> it looks like he'll be favourite. Needs to pot it. Yeah, he needed that. Well, I think all bets are off now as to what's going to happen next, but he's given himself a chance. Five. Yes, he's not quite straight enough on this. He's looking at going all around the table. Well, this is a masterful shot. This really is absolute dynamite. What a touch. Yeah, brilliant. I mean, he was unlucky to be snookered. Obviously, he was lucky to fluke the red, but he's just been one of those deciders, hasn't it? Well, he's walked around the table, I think, just to compose himself. He knows the brown goes. He knows where he wants to be. He just doesn't want to rush into any shots. Ten. Four balls left. O'Sullivan needs them all to clinch the most thrilling victory imaginable. Well, 14. the way this match has ended is quite something. Pink and black to reach the final. Nine. Well, just anywhere straightish. Screw the cue will pass the middle. Goodness me, he's almost straight on this. It's a brave way of playing it under pressure. 25. A memorable match this. High quality, dramatic. It's come down to the last ball. A truly unbelievable finish. Sullivan. Roddy O'Sullivan reaches the final here in Belfast as the players conduct their own post-mortem. He would have felt bad, I'm sure, about Fluke in the red. That's what he's like. But he made the clearance under pressure just when it looked like Selby was going to clinch it at the death. Quite extraordinary. What an afternoon of snooker we've seen here at the Waterfront Hall. Ronnie O'Sullivan has finally seen off Mark Selby 6-5 on the final black.